Assalamu alaikum Sayyidi Wa alaikum salam alhamdulillah Sayyidi, who or how did Sayyidina Abbas Khidr salam learn the Muhammadan knowledges? Who and how? What's the reality? I think you can Wikipedia, St. George, King Malkov, Malkali, Malkovid, was a, an individual, two of them, that were seeking out the fountain of youth. And they, they reached to a reality and once he drank from this fountain of youth, Allah granted him an eternal life on this earth. And to be uh, in the world of barzakh, this guide of realities. And his character is known throughout creation. In the UK they call him as Prince George. Yeah, yeah, the dragon slayer and they have all sorts of different symbols of, of use with Sayyidina Khidr So his, uh, his character is known throughout and the role that he plays and that the men who would go to sea when they would have difficulty they could call upon him and he would walk upon the water and appear to support them and help them. And St. George was the dragon slayer and helped them with many different creatures that were attacking. So this is a, someone whom drank from the fountains of realities and attained the role of guidance that Allah has, has given. So the interdimensional shaykhs on how to connect the world of form to the world of the hereafter which is extremely important an extremely important reality which now is only for UFO enthusiasts. Everyone else says, no, no, no we don't have that. No we have that very much. And this is all based on resolving these knots and these character defects within our, our reality and then increasing the vibration. Because if we understand that we're an energy being that shaitan wants us to vibrate very low and then you're with all the lower creation. As soon as you can vibrate at a higher frequency and lose the significance of the mass and mass in this formula is your dunya desire, dunya understanding. As Salaamu Alaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh. This is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream, every bit counts. As Salaamu Alaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh. Dunya relevance, everything has to be based on dunya. When you lose the mass means you lose the importance of, oh no it's not dunya, actually everything should be akhirah, everything is power is in akhirah. They meditate often, they, 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 they sort of reduce the importance of their mass and the realities of the physical form and as a result more energy comes, more energy comes and it's a horizontal movement. You're, you're moving forward in these vibrations. You're, you don't have to elevate to anywhere, you don't know, know where you're flying to. It's just a forward movement of vibration. As you vibrate stronger you're moving in, moving in, moving in and you enter into their dimension like a fabric that moves and you enter into their world of light which is a constant. So there's no more time in this world of light, time is relevant to this earth and to creation and to the world of form. There is no time in the world of malakut because the light is a constant and even beyond that it's not bound by our physics. So it's just a vibration. So what holds us then in this vibration? Two ropes, past and future.
shaitan plays on these two ropes. Anyone who comes to meet they play on these two ropes, right? Anyone who sends email is on these two ropes. Let me tell you about my past. Why? You're going to change anything from the past? You want to describe this rope is this big or is this like 20 feet wide the rope holding you from the past? It's all irrelevant, what happened in the past is already gone. You have to cut that rope that it happened, it's happened. Now what? We're going forward. What happened, happened. You're alive, Allah still likes you, He lets you send emails to the zikr. So you're not in, in any danger with Allah job. cut the rope to the past. If Allah was in danger with you, you would find yourself at the, that lady's concert right now. Who's that lady now singing everywhere? Yeah, I don't know either, they don't want her name mentioned. <laughs> Means you'd be in a satanic environment, putting your hands up and giving your allegiance to shaitan if Allah is angered with you. But whom Allah loves, He allows His name to be mentioned. So the past, don't worry about it, it's the past. Now the future, what's going to happen in the future, what's going to happen in the future, Allah only knows, do good right now, right? Make your deal with Allah now, not in the future. If you relieve me and if you do like this, I'm going to do like this, they don't care about those stories. Do it right now. So past you can't change. Future, there's no bargaining with Allah it's not like a bazaar. You have issues, resolve it right now. So right now in the present it's resolved, you live by the present. These two ropes shaitan's playing with people and they can't fly, they can't levitate, they can't move. When we learn to cut those our energies become increased, why? Because you're using all your energy for the present. Past, I don't even think about, future who cares? It hasn't even come. Right now you meditate, you contemplate, you resolve your issues now, you do what you want to do now, you want to be of service now. As a result your energy increases and you keep moving into a horizontal movement, forward movement. But shaitan's trying to hold you from moving forward. So got one rope on your neck and keep holding you back and they actually sit and meditate and think about the past. So these are the, the dangers of, of this understanding and how to, to release ourselves from the bond that shaitan is, is putting upon us. If Allah loves you, you're mentioning His name, that's that simple. <clears throat> As salaamu alaykum Sidi Walaykum As salaam As a high schooler I used to be non-practicing and unfortunately was into Scientology and from propagandas through their shows about aliens. How should I make Toba to cleanse and complete? Nothing, those were all learning to got you to be on this channel. So why you have to make Toba? But make tawbah all the time anyways, just making tawbah that you're not doing what Allah wanted. But in the concept of whatever we did in the past got us to this point here. Sometimes we said before like, like eating because spirituality is, is, is like food for the soul. How would you eat something good if you didn't spend a lot of time eating bad? Because how would you know this is good? So Allah for Salik takes them on journeys that are everywhere and they've been through many, many crazy things, many, many different things and as a result when they reach something good they know it's good, they don't have to doubt. If you're not there at that place where you know this is good you still have time to go, you know this is not meant for you. You're going to go around a couple blocks and taste a couple difficulties. Then you come back and say, oh now I know how really good this is, <laughs> yeah because you didn't have any, any experience. You will never appreciate this if you don't know this is good. 
So that's why the youth doesn't necessarily mean they're going to be here but they follow, follow, follow the taste of its reality and life will open a door and they're gonna go and they're gonna experience what they experience. And alhamdulillah if that love is strong enough and the experience was strong enough then they come back tasting and say, no, no this is real. That I've seen some crazy people out there, crazy life experiences out there and it becomes faster and faster. So we said with COVID that was a, a catalyst in this environment. Shaitan uses it to gather people like sheep, Rahman uses it as a catalyst, speed up a process that's taking too long. You want people to have tawakkul on Allah well bring death into their face. Uh, you immediately believe in Allah because you're about to meet Allah and then if you didn't meet Allah you're good with Allah because you, you know that death is waiting for you and they want to burn you, they don't want to bury you, they don't want anyone to come and see you in a room that you're dying in. So you keep thinking, oh Ya Rabbi please he says, save me, save me and if I end up there at least you take me. So it's a catalyst. That's why the, these events to speed up the process of people having faith, they take away a lot of this free will where you think you can just do what you want as long as you want and get away with whatever you want. No you can't. Donations came in much more when people are faced with death. Taweezes, everybody's sort of armed with taweezes and the faith in Allah increases. So then who, who's, who was to benefit from that? The Divine. That's why Allah says, shaitan plans but Allah's plan is greater. So maybe he got angry at the end, that why <laughs> all these people <laughs> became Muslim because he was trying to do his own scheme and then Islam was flourishing and people were believing and they were sitting at home and they couldn't use any of those devices and then the streets and subways and, and they're sitting there and, and logging on to realities and reading Qur'an and, and understanding their deen. So these are our, our opportunities. So everything in our life that we're faced with somebody can complain about something but in reality find out that it's actual opportunity. An opportunity to, to learn about your Lord and to make your connection with Allah and the love for Sayyidina Muhammad As-salamu alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum as salam rahmatullah Sayyid, there is a lot of talk about quantum entanglement. How is this related to Sufism? Well, Sufism is, is teaching all these realities. And Lloyd was talking about the quantum, quantum entanglement and that they now have a technology where they can link an, an atom's experience and that one atom will experience something and an a atom completely somewhere else can be entangled in its environment and experience the same event. Isn't that madad? But you're, you're trying to understand it at a scientific level. So the world of form teaches you connect your heart with the world of light, visualize the shaykh. Now move from the world of form and in the world of light, your light is a, a light. It has a, an energy coming out because what is light? It's energy. These energies are, are atoms, right? Your one atom is here. And the electron of just one little atom must be outside of this earth because they say if, if, if you could see an atom, if you raise the size of the atom, if you see it as a pin its electron must be outside of the earth because of the, the, the what, what do you call the distance from the center to the circumference of the electron. So in the world of light and going into the science of the world of light as soon as you want to connect your light to the light of the shaykh you're now in a quantum entanglement with your electrons and the shaykh's electrons because his light comes, comes near to you. Now his light is diffusing with your light and your atoms are now becoming entangled, right? They don't collide. That's proof that everything must be in an orbit and everything must be authorized by Allah Because if it was random every time electrons came near each other they would collide and explode but they don't. So it means that they come like, a, like trains on a track and they become entangled and locked in. As a result the shaykh's experiences can be cast upon the student 
and the student's experiences or difficulties can be relieved by the shaykh. So as soon as you meditate you're entering now into quantum understandings because quantum was the study of light. Man-made quantum technologies is nothing comparable to Allah's quantum technology, right? You're talking about a powered device from Toshiba is not the same as Allah's infinite power of a soul. What kind of power is that that has no battery? So as soon as these two souls are, are meditating and then we said, now they're connecting. Now every technology you understand apply it to awliya, otherwise you're bot parast, otherwise you're idol worshipper if you say no, right? Because you can't say that the, 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 the apple has it, Allah doesn't have it. My phone can cast onto your phone, well the shaykh should be able to cast into your heart down instantly. But do you have a capacity to receive it? Are you online to receive it? No. Because the shaykh is not allowing an open Wi-Fi because that's not secure. If he opened his Wi-Fi what would happen? Shaitans are hackers, right? He would be attacked all night long coming into his heart because he opened up his frequency. So the shaykh has a very encrypted frequency. He gives you permission to meditate. If you're a shaitan and you got his, his booklet on how to meditate, as soon as you try to connect his frequency, his, his antiviral software will attack you because it comes out and <laughs> burns them. So they don't try to connect onto that frequency, it's an encrypted code. But the student when they do, they've been given a permission now, use this recitation, enter into their encryption. As soon as they meditate, they send the frequency out, the frequencies look, make a connection. If there's a permission from Allah this light will begin to dress the student. That continuous connection is all of these technologies. So our, our crypto guys should really understand what's going on, right? So you have a live app where you think you're doing some transactions. But they say, oh it's dangerous if you use a live app because somebody can come and steal your whole wallet. So then they gave you a, an outside wallet which is cold storage. Well the shaykh is like that too. He's allowing you to interact with his app and to read his, his knowledges and teachings but you're not stealing anything. You still have to meditate, right? As soon as you meditate you can lock onto the cold storage. So the information always stored somewhere else. Otherwise every shaitan would come and sit in the course, learn things and go out and wreak havoc on the earth. You can't. It's stored somewhere else. You have access to it, right? So now you, 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 you look on your live app and says, you've got $10,000 in Bitcoin. But in Allah's version, if Allah's not happy with something, the 10,000 vanishes because they pulled the knowledge. So there's nothing that can be hacked. It's all encrypted on their on their contracts and all these realities. So all these realities are showing deep realities of the heavens. So a lot of people who don't understand what we're talking about, they get lost. But anything you see from technology, Allah has it much more powerful. Now it's just becoming understood. So the shaykhs can cast into the heart and you can try to log on to the knowledges. The knowledge you read just from the book, well that's not going to be the full thing. You want the full then you have to meditate and contemplate. By meditating and contemplating your light comes, ask for authority, their light looks and begins to scan. There's no viruses, there's nothing wrong, there's no bad intention with the light of this person. As a result their light begins to look on to the light of that person. So they're now quantumly entangled. And who's the shaykh's light? His shaykh, 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 shaykhs all the way up to the presence of Muhammadun Rasulullah Because that's the one when Allah made their bayat real, in ladina yubayyunka yubayyun Allah. So it means that if you want to connect with Muhammadun Rasulullah connect with your shaykh. Pass all of the verifications, all of the connections 
And as a result Prophet ﷺ's light is there entangled upon the servant because the shaykh's barakah is nothing, he's nobody. The barakah that he brings is the light of Prophet ﷺ and the love of Sayyidina Muhammad ﷺ. So it's very easy, Allah fiikum that this light of Prophet ﷺ is amongst you and with you and in you, just bring it in inshaAllah. Just imagine all the technologies and what Allah has. As Salaamu Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. Dearest Sayyidi, can we please give bayat today? The bayat, inshaAllah, at the end we do the bayat at the end of the talk. As Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. Thank you for everything. Welcome. Is there a reality to sensitive physical senses such as sensitive hearing? May Allah protect you and your loved ones, I mean. Sure. Allah bless you. Get the meditation book. That's all in the meditation and energy book. <coughs> Anytime you, you meditate and open up your senses, everything has to be sensitive, right? That's the opening. When you're sensitive to hearing means you're, you're hearing from a… Uh, higher frequencies, higher energies, ringings and uh, all, you're sensitive to every type of sound and vibration and the sense of feeling, you feel more. So this is the whole purpose of opening lataif which means latif means subtlety. So these are subtle energy points and to become subtle is important. Otherwise hardened and hard-hearted people feel nothing. But as soon as you become sensitive, everything is sensitive. Your heart is sensitive, your hearing is sensitive, your energy is sensitive and this is, this is, this is the way. Insensitive, hard-hearted people is, is not a good sign. So sensitivity is, is the way, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. Can you please guide me on how to deal with a person who lives in the same house as you and holds a grudge and doesn't talk to you for a past wrong done to them by you? Hmm. So we can't help other people, we just can help ourselves. That you know making your connection, keeping good manners, good character and through those good characters the people will see the, the character of the person that they're involved with. So inshaAllah Allah will change the heart, only Allah can change the hearts of people not ourselves. So when we do good and we reflect the good, Allah will begin to affect the change in others. So these are maybe signs for us to improve our character because just doing damage and saying sorry is maybe not good enough for a lot of people. But to say sorry, make changes, make corrections and, and try to make a, a tawbah and repentance showing the signs of, of regret and then Allah is the final authority that can change the hearts of people. You can go into our talks on magnetism, those are very important. We are attracted by a bond of a magnet and magnetism. So we emanate an energy and with significant others they feel a bond with us and they feel a magnetic juzba to connect. When fighting comes and you hit the magnet because you can reverse the polarity of a magnet by hitting it. So if you hit with the iron rod the magnet that was once attracting actually will flip the magnetic pole and become repelling. So people repel and that's why they call them, oh you repulse, you're repulsive. They're repelling or repelling the charge and the connection and this is by the fighting, by the agitations from shaitan. So once what was attracted becomes repelling and that's the role of shaitan that he wants to bother people to repulse each other and break, break relationships and bonds. So this is important that to ask Allah to repair the bond and to 
prepare the environment of ishq and muhabbat and good character inshaAllah. Subhana rabbika rabbal izzati amma yasifoon wa salaamun al mursaleen <coughs> wa hamdalillahi rabbil alameen. Bi hurmati Muhammad al Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al Fatiha. من نيات ختم خارج كان إن شاء الله. فاوز بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم. أشهد أن السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. This is Sheikh Najjan. Thank you for watching the video that you're watching. Inshallah, if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below. The programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream, every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.